So I'm going to uh, just bring up <clears throat> something, the agenda here, and I'm going to ask Mr. McGlasson to call the roll. Munson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Githens. Yes. Hamilton. Here. Piedmont Smith. Jones. Yes. Swafford. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. So I am having a little bit of internet difficulty. If you could uh, just wait for a minute, I should be able to uh, get everything working. And I'm not doing it very fast. Sorry. <clears throat> I cannot do it very fast at all. So, um, Ms. Gissens, would you take over and run the meeting until I can get my computer working, please? Uh, okay, sure. Um, Thank you. First on the agenda is the approval of the Board of Directors minute. Meeting minutes from May 13th, 2021. Is there a motion to approve? I move approval of those minutes. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any corrections, additions, comments? I, be I believe that um, in our, prior to our executive committee meeting, we made a few Scrivener's corrections. Um, yes. So what you see today is the uh, corrected version anyway. Um, if there are no comments from the board, um, well, Mr. McGlasson, would you please call the roll? Hamilton? Yes, sorry. <laughs> uh, Jones? Yes. Githens? Yes. Wofford? <laughs> Uh, abstain. I wasn't present. Thomas? Yes. Munson? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, thank you. Uh, now take you to page six of our uh, packet for the clash, cash flow report. Um, Okay, the <clears throat> page six lists the balances in the accounts. The operating account has a balance of $1,088,875.64. The savings account has a balance of $1,078.88. The closure bond debt account has a balance of $7,741.16. Capital account has a balance of $45,413.60 and the landfill post closure account. And I sent that mm -hmm. um, cash flow statement yesterday with the uh, claims and that balance is $760,749.01. And, $760, and on pages 13 and 14, you have a listing of pre-approved claims in the amount of $103,515.79. Yesterday, you received an email with current claims in the amount of $24,204.46. That brings the total of claims for approval to $127,720.25. Questions on any of those claims for us? I will note that on page uh, nine of the packet, we have the graph with the um, savings amount added in uh, as the mayor requested last mm -hmm. meeting. I was gonna say thank you for that. That graph looks more- uh, It looks good. Like we expect, it looks good. I always ask also that just for the record that our financial um, voice affirm that in your judgment all the claims are appropriate and should be paid yes yes thank you <clears throat> so uh miss githens i believe that 
our controller is signing the claims that are sent out by email. Is that is that still the case? And the director is as well. Yes. Yes, great. We appreciate that. Are there any other questions or discussion on the cash flow or the payroll and claims? I guess, I guess uh, I, I would, thank you, sorry, may I, I, with the graph and I just would note, I guess typically May is the lowest balance uh, or, or very close to the lowest balance we get in a year. And um, uh, it, it historically, I guess, has been the lowest month and we are at a $2 million balance. Um, so I appreciate that. I know we've got um, activities and, and issues ahead, but it's just noteworthy that that uh, that continues to climb and it may give us opportunity to think about investments in the future as we improve our services. So that's noteworthy. I don't think we've ever been just looking at that. We've never been above 2 million at the lowest point in the year. Let's hope it's the lowest point this year. It should be, uh, but just wanted to note that, thanks. Um, I would note that we have not yet had a motion, so I would, I'm going to go ahead and move the motion to the payroll and claims. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Are there other questions or concerns? Um, I had one question on page um, 17, line 21 under PC Mac. It, says on-site labor block for 2021. I don't know what that is. Um, uh, that's, uh, it's, it's uh, on-site technical support. We, we, we don't have an IT department, so we use PC Max uh, for those services. And uh, mm -hmm. we, they give us a discounted rate. We pre-purchase um, 100 hour blocks, or I'm sorry, uh, um, uh, I, I think it's a 20 hour uh, block of time um, that we pre-purchased. They give us a discounted hourly rate on that uh, mm -hmm. by purchasing the, the bulk the bulk hours in advance. So, and that's the, generally um, historically the, those blocks of time will last twelve to fifteen months. Thank you. Great. Okay. Um, are we ready to for a vote? Public yes. comment. Thank you. Is there any public comment on this? Seeing none, no hands raised. Um, Mr. Glassman, would you please call the roll? Thomas? Yes. Jones? Yes. Munson? Yes. Hamilton? Yes. Swafford? Yes. Githens? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so Ms. Githens, you want to continue? I have I have things working again, but you can continue because you're doing great. Oh, no, I'd be happy to hand this back over to you. <laughs> well, this is this is a this is a great handoff time because now we're turning to uh, solid waste management plan update, and Mr. McGlasson will will talk with us about the status of the of the work on the plan. Uh, yeah, just re referring to the memo in the packet. Um, and I apologize. I, I I'm have developing a draft plan. Um, I intended to, to have something up in Dropbox before this meeting, and that obviously didn't happen, but um, I will let you all know that I will be out of the office next week, so I will get, get whatever I have completed into Dropbox uh, before the end of the day uh, tomorrow uh, so that the board and the CAC can, uh, can use that as a working document and, and try to uh, get that uh, revised into something that the board would be comfortable considering uh, in July or August uh, so that we can get a plan mm -hmm. adopted. Um, also, uh, the last paragraph there, um, can note that um, I talked with Professor uh, Waldman from the capstone class and uh, had 558 of the online surveys completed. Um, 
I will say I, I was a little disappointed in that number, but uh, he'd indicated that in his experience with these things, that that's a pretty good response rate. Um, so he, he was happy with that. And uh, he, he and the, the class are compiling that data and said they should be able to have a report to us by the end of the month. So, so I would like to ask a question about that. Um, the class project, uh, it's already past the end of the semester. Are they continuing on? Um, yes, he's indicated sort of that- special project? He's, he's indicated that, that he has a few, a few of the students that have agreed uh, to continue to, to finish this project out, so. Great. That's very nice. Any questions about uh, the plan update? Seeing no hands raised. <clears throat> I just got another message that said internet connection unstable. And <clears throat> this just shows that we really do need to, to deal with the broadband questions in our community. <laughs> <laughs> there are places that just the internet very effectively, I'm sorry to say. Uh, <clears throat> next, we'll have a report from the CAC. Mr. Joseph Winia is present. I am. Good afternoon, board members. Uh, I will begin by saying that there have been no um, there's been no activity since the production of the report that was provided in the packet. And I think the only thing I would like to highlight during this particular report is the management plan costs uh, spreadsheet that was created, because I think it might be of particular interest and of potential use for board members. Um, I could either, well, I think I will first put a link to it in the chat if you'd like to access it on your own device. And I can also attempt a screen mm -hmm. share to <clears throat> illustrate the... Uh, It'd be great to share it. Yeah, let's see if I can get that. It'd be great to share this with the public on your screen. All right, is it visible? Yes. All right. So the yeah. reason I think this might be of interest is because it breaks down all of the goals and objectives so far drafted by the CAC with line items and then has two methods, two optional methods for essentially estimating a total cost and budget for the, the related, the plan related objectives. So the first option is just by summation. So indicating an estimate for each line item, which will then be totaled at the bottom. And then the alternative is to uh, take just a ratio of the existing <laughs> district budget and then by assigning a priority to each of the goals and objectives, it will just calculate a breakdown of how the funds should roughly be allocated according to um, whichever is indicated as the priority. So I can show you a completed example. Um, to date, I am the only one who's completed an estimate, but these are values that I put in with a few comments on where I sourced the uh, estimations. And then in the end, there's uh, a few subtotal items, including an annual recurring amount, a one-time amount, a total of all of those things, and then what the yearly average would be for that <clears throat> total over the span of the, the plan. Five and then Similarly, there's just the, I did the prioritized breakdown as well, just for comparative purposes, and then just set a percentage of the total budget, set priorities for everything, and then within each um, major category of the four categories that we've chosen for goals mm -hmm. and objectives, there are subtotals for the total ratio of the funds and the um, total allocation of funds for each of those categories. So if board members are interested, they could simply copy the template tab and then rename it with their own budget version and then fill it in with all of their own content for um, uh, increased number of estimates or for just personal interest. So with that, I will leave this up for the moment and ask if there are any questions either on the contents of the report or on this particular um, spreadsheet. 
So I would like to comment. Um, I think this is a, a very good exercise and certainly will help us at budget time. But I would like to know where you're getting uh, the information to create an estimate. So various sources. Um, in this particular case, in the summation method, for instance, um, there are two options for entering amounts. There can either just be a straight total if there's going mm -hmm. to be um, just a single dollar amount associated with it mm -hmm. or an hourly rate and a total mm -hmm. amount of hours. So in the areas where I made comments, for instance, for this media campaign, I based it off of the city of Fayetteville's um, use less campaign that was referenced in the city's mm -hmm. climate action plan. And, and to enter here, I guess the values that were taken from that Good. document. And then similarly for the um, website update, there was a particular website cost estimator that I just did from web searching that provided sort of municipal grade quotes based on population size and mm -hmm. basic web needs and just very ballparked amounts to have a rough idea of about how much could be allocated. And then for the rest, it was just a matter of, uh, again, personal mm -hmm. estimation in terms of the amount of time that would be practical to spend on one of these activities over a given year. And then mm -hmm. I just picked some very basic hourly rates, roughly approximating either like a, <laughs> an actual staff position or an entry level um, or like intern type position. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions or comments on either the sheet or the report's contents? I just put thanks into the chat. It's wonderful. Thanks for assembling mm -hmm. it for us. Terrific. Absolutely. Very helpful. With that, I will end the share and that concludes the content of my report. So thank you very much. This is, uh, this is very helpful. And I think, I think it will be uh, especially useful. And I think it will be uh, particularly helpful uh, to the executive committee as we uh, start, our, start our work on the, uh, the draft budget. Great, I do hope so. Thank you very much. Uh, other comments? Well, thank you very much. Let's move on then to department report and we'll begin with Mr. McGlasson. Yeah, I'll just um, highlight a couple of things. Um, Noted that first bullet point with the uh, health department rescinding uh, COVID <laughs> emergency health order uh, last month. Uh, that's allowed us to, uh, to get all of, our, all of our recycling centers back under normal operating procedures and schedules. Uh, we, we do still have signage up encouraging the use of uh, masks and uh, you know, social physical distancing, um, but uh, no longer have any vehicle limits or uh, program restrictions or hour restrictions at any of our recycling centers. Um, and then I'm going to skip over the second bullet point for a minute and uh, just and then make note that uh, we are, uh, as of our payroll date of June 4th, 20 of our 26 employees have submitted completed COVID vaccination records uh, to the district uh, for the benefit right. uh, approved by resolution 2021-05. So that's almost 80% of our staff and very pleased, uh, very pleased to see right. that. And, uh, um, and, uh, and then I'll back up to the second bullet point. And, and if not now, um, during, uh, during the, the all other items at the end of the meeting, I, I I would request that we spend a little bit of time discussing um, how beginning with the July meeting, uh, the board wishes to move forward with, with the hybrid meeting, um, hybrid meetings that, uh, that we'll, be, we'll be doing based on the policy and ensuring that we uh, you know, have 50% of members present in the room and, uh, and how we'll manage that moving forward. Very good. <clears throat> Anything further? Mr. McGlasson? No, no, 
Not specific to the report, no. Okay, thank you. So let's move to uh, Mr. Morgan's report. Good afternoon. Um, you will notice that I put in there that we have now received the data yet from Republic. So um, we cannot complete the, the update on the, on the spreadsheet. And then I also wanna mention that the sites have been graded. They've been stone added. They look a lot better, particularly Bethel Lane. It's a lot smoother on the exit. So I um, wanna thank Nate Anderson from Anderson Excavating and Lawn Care for doing that. And we will look to do that again in the fall, again, as we get a little closer to the uh, winter weather in the fall. So that's all I have, but I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. So, board members, do you have any questions for Mr. Morgan? Ms. Githens. Yes, I, I was disappointed that we didn't have the uh, updated information from uh, Republic or the spreadsheets. Any, any notion as to when those might be forthcoming? Between now and hopefully next meeting, that's the, I'm at their mercy, so yeah, I can't do anything about that, unfortunately. Mm. <clears throat> Frustrating. Thanks. Yes. So, so I have a question about uh, the <coughs> video display devices. 175 in one month. Was this students moving out during May that no, it, led to just, this? It's just the normal wear and tear of some months are better than others, and May was a particularly good month for us. And 13 illegally dumped ones. <laughs> Strange how it works, yes. Yeah. So, so drive-by uh, broken television dumping. Can be with or found at any of their five sites. Yeah. Okay. Plus, plus the illegals, you know, on the sides of yeah. the road, things like that, too. Mm -hmm. Questions for Mr. Morgan? Okay, then let's Thank move you. on, please, to, to um, Mr. Paulson. Hello. Um, Hello. Uh, the only thing, uh, report is kind of just straightforward there. Uh, the only thing I'd really try to highlight there is that we had a, um, now that we can do our groundwater sampling in May, um, we hit that pretty hard, Mary Beth and I, um, the first two weeks and got through everything uh, without any issues, kind of before weather, kind of in amongst that kind of stuff. Everything went pretty smooth. Um, all the samples were all uh, sent overnight FedEx to uh, Element Materials up in Fort Wayne. And we're just, right now, I'm just waiting for their report and their documentation of all the, the samples to forward them on to AECOM for statistical analysis. So that's uh, should be here within the next week to 10 days to get that and then forward that on to uh, AECOM and that'll take them about a, a month or so to go through all that data and put it in the report that I would need to uh, work on to send the item. That's kind of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Uh, questions from the board? Ms. Githen? I, I had just one. I noticed that the rainfall differences um, this year versus last year, that it was pretty striking to me. <laughs> which, which of those two years is, is more typical since I don't have, you know, historical data? Um, last year was the, the wettest year we've had since we started kind of documenting what we do. So um, hopefully not not that much in the future. Um, uh, let me try to see what, let me, um, I, Ms. Githens, I, I might offer, I think that if, if you'd like, Mr. Polson could probably put together some historical precipitation data for you for the next board meeting. That, yeah. No, that's okay. I just know that it impacts the amount of leachate if it's related yeah. to the temperature and things like that too. So, um, because 
Mr. Paulson yeah. has taught me a few things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, last year, last year, since we started this stuff, last year was the wettest year we've had. So, I mean, uh, more three or four or five inches less than last year is, I think, more average, more typical. So, mm -hmm. okay. well, I appreciate learning that this year, which seems terribly rainy to me in May, uh, is less than last year. I didn't remember that it was. Yeah, let's way. not jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're done with May. We can't jinx, yes. jinx May. It's can't jinx May. So, but yeah, so, so we're almost halfway through the year. So. Right. Well, you're keeping keeping us seeing this in perspective. So thank you. Yep. Any qu questions further for Mr. Paulson? Thank you very much. So we have uh, a time now set aside for public comment. And I'm looking at the list of attendees and I see so few people who might wish to comment, but let's take the time and let people raise their hand if they would like to comment. And I am seeing none. That brings us then to um, uh, comments from the directors. Would any of the directors like to make a comment? I would I'm just. Seeing... I would yes, just. Please. Everybody working so hard on the the plan, the report that'll be real, very important, and appreciate all those who are working so hard on that. And looking forward to that. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Hamilton. Anyone else? Well, this might be a record short meeting. I appreciate everybody's time. And I'm sorry again that I had internet difficulty, but uh, that's the way it is out at the edge of the county. So um, our next meeting is, uh, what date, Mr. McGlasson? July 8th. July 8th. Very good. We will then be in our um, optional mode for attending in person or uh, via Zoom. And the requirements that we have at least half of our uh, board members uh, present in person is one that the legislature felt very strongly about. So they, uh, they set it up so that we would do this. And I don't think that's a big issue, but there might be times when uh, multiple people would prefer to be away uh, to attend on Zoom rather than in person. And we need a procedure to uh, help us figure out uh, who's going to do this. First come, first served, um, draw straws, one rock, paper, scissors, I don't have any any other recommendations. Those seem to be the options to me. Anybody have any good ideas for sorting this out? I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll just throw out real fast that I mean I you know the staff is prepared to uh, you know keep track of who's attending in person and electronically and make sure that that's reflected in, in minutes and other meeting documents uh, and and do have. Um, some, some tools, tracking sheets uh, that have uh, been provided by the county attorney's office so that we can keep track and make sure that, that members don't run afoul of the, you know, the consecutive meet, you know, participating in consecutive media or two, more than two mm -hmm. meetings electronically and, and so forth. So mm -hmm. staff will keep track of all that and keep members surprised of uh, where, where they stand with regard to attendance requirements. Okay, very good. Ms. Thomas? Yes, um, I just, I think the concern is how do we track attendance before the meeting? In other words, who is planning to attend in person right. versus uh, exactly. planning to attend remotely? Because we have to have at least four members of the board present at the NetU Hill Room. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you want to start asking for RSVPs for attendance at every meeting or if there's some way to do that. But that I think is going to be paramount 
um, because then we might have to communicate with a couple of members and say, look, you know, you all can't be absent, so who can come and, and work something out before the meeting even starts, so. So we could, um, we could set it up so that uh, the presumption would be that people would, would be attending in person unless they requested uh, Zoom attendance or they would be unable to attend at all. That might cut down uh, a little bit, but it, uh, there, is, there is peace of mind to having an RSVP that says, I'll be there in person. So uh, I think that is, that's something I'd like to hear uh, Mr. McGlasson uh, respond to. Do you have a preference here? Uh, I, I, for, for, for staff purposes, you know, having the expectation that uh, directors will be in attendance in person unless otherwise notified, um, I think w w would work out well and then would leave it up to the directors. But, you know, as far as the ability to, to attend, participate electronically, you know, first come, first serve. Um, okay. from, from my perspective, um, you know, with, with understanding that, you know, depending on people's schedules and when things come up and their ability to notify staff, we may have to work some things out because somebody may have a conflict come up suddenly that they need to attend electronically when they were originally planning to attend in person. But. Right. How long as staff should we contact if we're hoping to be able to attend electronically? Uh, myself or Connie okay. Hudson. Okay, thank you. So I think, I think that's a reasonable plan. Uh, <clears throat> And just to double check, we could only attend electronically two meetings in a row. Is that correct? Two consecutive meetings, yes. Two consecutive meetings, yep. Okay. So everyone has this down and... Um, and I would also throw out that in August, uh, in anticipating that there'll be a vote on our budget in August, uh, in order to vote on the budget, you would have that. to be in attendance in person. Yes. Yes, I was just going to bring that up. So, okay, well, we'll uh, we'll have some flexibility for July, and then the next month we'll all be together in person. So, any comments or questions, Ms. Githens? I um, I was part of a beta test of the capabilities in the Net U Hill room, and I feel like TSD has once again anticipated what our needs are. Um, and have gotten things set up pretty well for things. Um, so that, very good. Yeah. I'm actually looking forward to some in-person meetings. So some, but not all. <laughs> so, any, any further comments from, from the board, from our staff, from our CAC? See none will adjourn this meeting until and reconvene on July 8th, 4 o'clock. See you in person or on Zoom. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.